Hey guys, welcome to today's video. I am decked out in the attire and hairstyle of one who's been hanging out with their toddler all day. So I wanted to discuss the idea of flaws. And this isn't the first time I've talked about flaws and the things, I, I think it's really useful in life to be able to have as realistic of an assessment of yourself as possible. And it's really difficult to do this when it comes with flaws. So it's very easy. Well, and it, it can actually be difficult both ways. So it can be difficult for us to address the things that we're good at because we might have these entrenched ideas about um, our own sense of worth. Like, oh, I'm not very good at knitting when actually you're super good at knitting, whatever it is, because you have some, some, uh, some baggage related to the idea of, uh, you value valuing your own skills but on the other side it can be really uncomfortable to say man i'm just not a very generous person or whatever it is it's hard to look that flaw in the face and confront it and then do anything about it but if if you can take out the one thing that i've been practicing or at least thinking about perhaps not very successfully so far is taking out of the emotion of my flaws and my strengths. If I can take out the emotional signature of them somewhat, like if I can at least um, try, try to appraise myself in realistic terms, like I just uh, got the sense of like going to a car dealership, like what would someone totally objective, someone who doesn't know me, but someone who got to know me, was able to observe me, um, maybe much like you, objective viewer, you might be able to say, okay, well, this is what I see as your strength. This is what I see as your weaknesses and, and so on. And that might be helpful to me because it's hard for me to look at those things and uh, and say, oh, well, I'm not very good at this, this or this. Because because you, it's just hard. It's hard to, to confront it because if you, maybe you discover, oh, I'm not a very generous person, then that could lead you to feel bad about yourself. Um, you might start getting some self-loathing um, or like, oh, you're like the worst person. You know, you start getting into dysfunctional thoughts like that. So the, the fear is that by confronting maybe the less uh, positive aspects of yourself, the, you know, the things that aren't great about you, which let's face it, all of us have these things, then you're, you're going to be coming up across against self-criticism and self-loathing and things like that. But that, that isn't a necessary part of the process. You can look at an aspect of yourself like, I'm not a very generous person. And and you can look at that without getting emotional, emotional about it, like without it cascading into this feeling of uh, I'm a terrible person. Like the conclusion does not have to be, therefore I'm a terrible person. So to be able to look at your own strengths and weaknesses and do it without an emotional signature, without feeling like, oh, I'm so amazing, look at all my like good qualities, or I'm the worst person ever, look at all my terrible flaws. Just saying, okay, these are my flaws. Okay, these are my strengths. Once you're able to see yourself in a realistic way, the way someone who's objective to you might be able to see, then you're gonna have a lot more power because going into any situation, you're not blind. If you don't know what your weaknesses are, Every situation you're going, every new experience, every um, relationship you're starting, every um, business venture you're attempting, whatever it happens to be, you are flying a little bit blind. So the better you know yourself, the better chance of success in whatever it is you're doing. So using the example of, like say you're, you're um, making a new friend and you don't really know who you are. It's a lot likely, it's a lot more likely that uh, your friend might just be a partial match, like the, this new person they might match up with some of your qualities, but not all of them, because you don't even know what qualities you're looking for in a friend. You don't even know what qualities um, that you have inside of yourself. You don't like have a good appraisal of your own strengths or weaknesses, because there's a resistance to any emotional baggage that comes from that confrontation. So one thing that I find helpful is actually to just ask someone else and try to be as objective as possible. So one question that's kind of fun, I'm thinking, okay, Talking about flaws isn't always super fun. Um, I feel like I've gotten pretty good at it. I feel like uh, most things you could throw at me is like, yeah, I've thought about that. My kid's having a party downstairs, basically. Um, so I, I don't feel like uh, I, I have as much of an issue with this anymore, but a fun way to frame this is I like to think about stories. So instead of thinking like, what are my negative characteristics? One fun twist could be, what is my fatal flaw? And so for those of you who took literature classes in school or um, just, you know, you know these things about story writing, um, a lot of characters, it's like, it's, it's classical story writing for a character to have a fatal flaw. So you see this in Shakespeare with Hamlet. Um, it's basically the idea that the, 
you have this one flaw that ends up killing you. Uh, so for example, like a really modern example would be if you guys have seen Game of, Game of, Game of, Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones, the character, Jamie Lannister. Spoiler alert if you have not seen it for the next 10 seconds. So you've been warned. Um, his fatal flaw is his uh, love for his sister, for example. Um, so it's fun to, okay. What is the flaw that maybe not so dramatically will kill me, but what is the, what is the flaw of mine that could, in the story of my life, be my undoing? What is that one thing that if I continue expressing or I continue not paying attention to will um, keep me from getting where I want to go in life? And this is a fun question. It's a fun way to approach the idea of flaws. If, if looking at your negative qualities is something that's generally wrapped up in a lot of emotion, because if you think of your life as a story and yourself as a character and this fatal flaw as like part of the story and part of the character, it actually gives you a degree of separation between you, like the actual you, and then the character of you. And I think that's really, really important because if, if you just dig right in and like, these are my flaws, um, they're my flaws. You're, you're really, um, it's hard to separate like the real inner you for the, the you that you just, um, your character. I'm basically saying the same thing and, and spinning in circles. That's a whole other conversation that I feel like we could get into. But thinking of it in terms of a story and a character, I think is a much easier way to get out of the emotional baggage part of it. Um, so it, it's just a little bit more fun to explore. So for example, um, if I ask someone, what's what's my fatal flaw? Uh, because I might have a different idea of what someone else might, might see. So I could ask a few friends um, and one of them told me the thing that might be my fatal flaw is that uh, not, not asking for help or uh, thinking that I can do everything by myself. And I wouldn't have thought of that one, but hearing it said, it was like, huh, okay, okay, that's probably really true. That's probably the thing that I would undo myself with. And for everyone else, someone else, it might be, um, you, maybe there's someone who was like, no, they're gonna just like kill themselves doing some like foolish risk because they're like, they take ridiculous risks. Or maybe it's the opposite, your fatal flaw is that you never want to leave your house. You're so afraid of everything that you like never set foot outside or what I'm taking extreme examples, but um, just, that was just an example of one that was brought to my attention. I'm like, now that I'm thinking about this as, as my, my life is a story, I tend to think this way as my character, as the role I'm playing in my story, the fatal flaw, thinking I would do everything myself. And I, I'm just seeing like all the ways that that could manifest as like negative consequences in my life. And it gives me something to think about. How do I change my situation now so that I'm not doing everything myself, so that I do ask for help, so that I do have like a team and friends, because I, I do everything by myself. I'm an only child and it's the, the default setting. So anyway, my question for you, what is your fatal flaw in your character's life story? What is the one thing that could unravel everything. Maybe not kill you, but uh, maybe, maybe we could be that dramatic if you want it to be, but, but at least uh, prevent you from living your best life, the thing that would hold you back. If there were people watching your story on TV, there's like people sitting on the couch, they're like eating popcorn, watching your life. What's the thing that they're like, oh, I can't believe they're doing this, throwing popcorn at the screen. Um, that's just a fun thing to think about. Anyway, I'll catch you guys later.